up, Woody Nerdigans? This is the one and only Packer Girl 89 of Nerdigans, Inc. and anime and manga contributor to Bounding into Comics. And man, 2023 is really shaping up to be the year of the waifu because not only are we getting the anime adaptation of Goddess Cafe Terrace and the second season of Kanojo Mo Kanojo, but also the third season of Kanojo Akarashi Masu, a.k.a. Rent a Girlfriend. So before I get into this story, let me just remind you to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And because, of course, this channel, let alone this video, are not sponsored, if you love what we're doing and want to help keep this operation alive and kicking so we can keep bringing you more um, anime and manga content, whether it be live reactions like for Kanoja Okarashi Masu, which we cover every Monday, or um, news and analysis like this video, feel free to hit up our Cash Up and PayPal links are in the description box below, as well as the links to the stories that we're going to be covering up in here. So... Woohoo! Okay, so first off, anime only you have no fucking clue because the real queen of this series is coming, and that is Minnie Amori. Let's be real. Sorry, Minnie Amori, not sorry, Minnie Amori is the best girl of this fucking series. She is saving this goddamn manga right now, let's be real. I love Amori. She is queen, she is life, she is everything. Yes. And I'm kind of let down with the, um, uh, the announcement video, which was at the end of uh, the season finale of season two with the little chibis. Why didn't you just have little chibi Yamori come in? You could have had little chibi Yamori come in and introduce season three. I swear to God, if Yamori is not in season three's uh, trailers, I, uh, I, I will be so pissed if she not introduced in the season three trailers. I'll be fucking angry, because that's my waifu. That is my queen. That is my everything. I love you, Maury. She is everything. Um, the release date for it is going to be um, March 2023. Yeah. Um, they're saying that, um, according, according to the info I have from Anime Geek, they are saying that this season was um, a strong adaptation of, um, of Kanojo Okarashi Masu. Um, which is, I'm glad to hear it because this upcoming season is going to be the adaptation of probably the most powerful arc and my favorite arc of the manga, which is, um, which is the movie arc. And for those of you that don't know about the movie arc, seriously, have you not read the manga? Um, the movie arc is very significant to me because this is when, um, uh, we have the beautiful moment with uh, Sayori and um, and uh, uh, and Shizuru and hell even Sayori and uh, Kazuya as well. But I really love um, when Sayori gives us this really powerful line. She gives a lot of powerful lines in this arc, but the one about the significant truths that really has stood with me has stayed with me. And as someone that's like in year, because this is literally like the around the third year anniversary of, um, of Brian's death. So I, yes, I'm in my grieving process. And when I was covering this chapter, um, or the chapters, um, from this arc, um, it, this arc really helped me with, uh, um, with my grieving process and it really helped me connect to Chizuru on a personal level. So I'm telling you right now, if this gets bastardized, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Don't bastardize this arc. Don't bastardize, like, the best fucking arc of the manga. I swear to God, TMS, if you do, I will be extremely angry. And don't bastardize Yumori either, because Yumori is the queen of this goddamn series. But anyways, this is what Annie Geek says in terms of, like, the adaptation as a whole. Um, but I'm going to just, I have to call them out on this shit, though. When rom-com ma manga series are adapted for TV series... The scriptwriters will often great, greatly rearrange story arcs, skip chapters, and condense content for time. Motherfucker, that is not an anime adaptation. That is an anime interpretation. When you do this shit, when you rearrange stories, story arcs, skip chapters, and co condense content for time, that is an interpretation. You can't do that shit. Like, come on. I'm going to be fair with this. When you're condensing content like the like this, fine. When you're skipping content, fine. But and skipping chapter, when you're rearranging story arcs, it says greatly rearrange story arcs, that's not an adaptation anymore. That's an interpretation. That's not uh, why bother. And then they say 
perfect example is the Kaguya-sama Love is War anime. No! Kaguya-sama Love is War anime is written in a way to where, um, it's kind of like Detective Conan, where you can, uh, where it has its own mini arcs going on in the series. So you can, like, so you, you can have them, um, have them done at different times. Yeah, you can, which it works. So Kaguya-sama Love is War is a little bit different. It is because of how epi boring to shit. episodic it is. Ha. Huh. The arcs are very episodic. And Akka, I think Akka was smart, and I think she did that on purpose. But Rent-A-Girlfriend is, is not like that. Rent-A-Girlfriend is continuous. Yes, Kaguya-sama is continuous too, but Kaguya-sama is, again, is a lot more like Detective Conan, and Ayama said that it, um, uh, that he wrote Detective Conan like that on purpose, so that way that um, if he wanted to turn uh, his story or, like, a sp uh, specific arcs into movies, that he could do that. And I think Akka was thinking along the same lines of, uh, lines of that for, like, if they had uh, specific um, uh, stories they wanted to put in anime form, then that was it. So, Akka is, is smart like that. So that's why I'm like, I, I, you can't include Kaguya-sama like that. Nah, this is a stupid way to compare this to Kaguya-sama. Nah, don't compare it to Kaguya-sama. By contrast, the Rent a Girlfriend anime is a more straightforward adaptation of the manga series, largely due to necessity. There is a definite story progression between most of the chapters, so making any changes has major ramifications due to all the connecting plot points. That's not to say the anime didn't make changes. For example, episode one switched some of the events of the first two chapters around um, around by having the hospital scene take place before the college scene. Why? Sometimes the dialogue is condensed and they skip um, minor scenes like uh, the beach pocky kissing game of chapter 11. The most notable scene change, um, the most notable change by Rental Girlfriend season two was that it skipped chapters 54 and 55. What? This change was probably made to maintain a consistent timeline since the first season skipped a scene related to Kazuya's dad that connected these two. Are you fucking serious? Really? Hold up. Are you fucking for real? Why would you do that? Kazuya's dad ends up becoming... Kazuya's dad is in the fucking paradise arc. Why would you skip that? So are we just gonna skip the shit that... Like, are we gonna just skip, like, when the paradise content gets adapted? Are we just gonna skip all the content relating to Kazuya's dad? Is that what's gonna really happen? Oh my fucking god! This this is really gonna happen, isn't it? Oh my fucking god! It's gonna happen! I I, I oh god! Oh god! Oh god! The adaptation pacing was also noticeably faster near the end of the second season. Oh, there's your boy! Ah, there she is! There's our queen! I see her! I see you, Yumori! I see you! I see my I see my queen! I see her, dude! If you're gonna have okay, this is why I have to I have to bitch. TMS, you have no fucking excuse for not having a, like Yamori just introdu being introduced at the end of se uh, at the end of um season two and introducing season three. If you're gonna have her make a cameo here, there is no fucking excuse for this shit. Okay. Now let's get to this. The adaptation um, pacing was also noticeably faster near the end of the second season, which meant that certain scenes were skipped. For example, there was a major Sumi fan service scene that was skipped by season two, episode eleven. In the ma um, in the manga, when they go fishing, uh, Kasia's um, finger gets hurt, and Sumi starts sucking the wound. They skip that for real. Okay, so this is the chapters. Oh, they give a guide too. Okay, so this is what were what was um adapted in uh for for the anime. The anime geek, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. This makes my life a lot easier because then I can now tell tell you guys where to go. So this is so they gave us an idea of the pacing. So for episode, holy shit, they went that fast. 
All right, so for episode one, they adapted the first two chapters. For episode two, they adapted chapters two through five? What? What? For episode uh, three, they adapted chapters six through ten. Oh, God, I'm scared. I am scared for this arc, fam. They're going to bastardize the movie arc. I know they are. For episodes, uh, for episode four, chapters um, 11 through 14. For episode five, chapters 14 through 18. For episode six, chapters 19 through 22. For episode seven, um, chapters 23 through 20. Whoa, 28. Episode eight, uh, chapters 28 through 31. And then, dude, it went from, like, two to three to four and to five. Holy shit. 28 through 31 through, for episode eight. Cha uh, episode nine was chapters 32 through 37. Episode 10 was chapters 37 through 41. Episode 11 is chapters 20, um, 41 through 45 and 50. Whoa, What? I'm scared for this arc. I am scared for the movie arc. I am scared. I am fucking scared. Oh my god, season two is worse, guys. Holy shit, it gets worse. All right, they weren't kidding when they uh, when it got faster. All right, let's get let's keep going here. And um, episode twelve. Uh, okay, so season or uh, episode eleven and forty one through forty five and fifty four. They just skipped to like 54 and then episode 12 was chapters 46 through 50. I knew this shit was going to be bad, but holy fuck, it's bad. Okay, so now let's get to see season two. So episode one, it was 51 uh, through 53. Then episode two uh, for season two was 56 through 58. Episode three it was chapters 59 through 62. Dude, it went from like... Dude, it just jumped so fucking fast already. Damn. Because at episode three, it went to for 59 to 62. Then it, for episode four, it adapted chapter 62 through 65. Dude, I am going to bug the fuck out of my editor to write about this. I am concerned. Um... Let's see. Episode 4 is chapter 62 through 65. That was adapted. Episode 5 is chapter 66 through 69 adapted. Um, episode uh, 6 was chapter 70 through 73. It went back to... That's weird. Um, oh, no. Is it all the same? Yeah, they're all, like, three chapters, right? Yeah. Okay. Three, four chapters. All right. So, episode 7 is chapter 74 through um, 77. Then episode 8 is chapters 78 through 82. Wait a minute. Then it goes up to 4. Episode 9. Oh, I... Wait. It said it skipped... Yeah, it skipped... It did skip chapters 54 and 55. Yeah! Because um, chapter 54, they only... They literally only adapted a little bit from um, episode 11 of the first season. Oh, my God. They literally did skip chapter 54 and 55. They weren't kidding. Um... Oh, God. Uh, episode 8 of season 2 was 78 through 82. Um, now, here's where it's getting faster. 80, um, episode 9 was chapters 83 through 87. Episode 10 was um, adapted eight, epi chapters 88 through 92. Holy shit. Then, uh, chapters 93 through 99, uh, 9 was for episode 11. And then, episode 12, the final episode adapted um, chapters 99 through 104. And all in all, second, the second season finale, uh, season's finale of Kanojo Okarashi Masu, season 2, episode 12, found a stopping point corresponding to manga volume 13, chapter 104. It's the best stopping point since it ends in a dramatic fashion with Kasuya convincing Shizuru to take a leap of faith and pursue her dream of making a uh, crowdfunded movie so her grandma can watch, uh, watch it on the big screen before she passes away. The finale scene with Shizuru in the bath also indicates that she's starting to feel something for Kazuya. To end uh, the second season earlier in the middle of uh, Chizuru's flashback wouldn't have made uh, sense, and it's just too sad to end with Chizuru's failure at the Lovedoki audition. And ending with Sumi's practice date was also a bad stopping since it, ended, it ends with Kazuya and Sumi literally crying together over the whole situation. Um, the good news is that the manga currently offers m more than enough source material. But dude, the pacing though is so bad. Um, 
uh, source material for Rent a Girlfriend season three to be made. That's it. They don't bastardize it and just like skip over a bunch of shit. Norm, same with uh, um, or just like or re um, or oh, what's the word or uh, rework it like. This is the same, like, what the fuck? But I will agree with them to this situation. Like, sometimes we're in, when we're talking about, like, um, redoing scenes, reworking scenes to where it works to, like, end a season, I will agree with that. It does work. This worked fine. But but having it end with the failure of the Love Doki audition? Why not end it, make it end, like, a shitty note like this? Or end, like, um, with uh, Chizuru finding out her grandma is dying. Or where it's not looking good. Like, have it end, like, have it end on a really sad note. This manga is very, gets very, very sad. I don't understand why it's bad to, to have a sad ending. It just makes me think of Wit. Um, with what Wit was saying in regards to, like, Ancient Magus Pride and why they did it the way they did uh, for the, the stupid anime original ending when it was unnecessary... Um, because they wanted to tell a complete story, but in the process, they cut all this lore. They literally cut all the fucking lore, the magical lore, cut Joseph's backstory and all this shit because they wanted to tell their own story with a fucking non-canon ending, which really fucks up season two of Ancient Magus Bride, by the way, because none of that shit is in there. It's like Aeon Exorcist all over again for that, but that's a whole different video. But still... Like, why but, but why not end the second season earlier in the middle of Chizuru's flashback? Or, 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 um, or not the flashback, excuse me. Now, why not end it, end it with Chizuru's failure at the Love Doki audition? Why not end it with Sumi's, uh, practice date? Why not? Or, why not? I'm, I would rather have an end at, like, the end of, uh, the Love Doki, um, audition failure than... Then and have like all the content adapted, then this shit. Wait, this is ridiculous. Cause you get some higher stakes this way. Like this shit from what if this feels like this is more of something for like season three and then like going into the movie and, and all this other stuff would be going into season four. Like I really am not happy with how this is being handled. TMS, what the fuck are you doing? Better yet, English-only manga readers wishing to read ahead of the series can jump straight to English Volume 13 when the first season ended. Uh, manga readers had to wait until summer 2021 for the English uh, Volume 7 to release. Uh-huh. Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see what the English... Uh, let's see what the Rent a Girlfriend uh, Season 3 anime TV spoilers plot... Uh, uh, what it says here. Let's see what it says here. The last time audiences watched the Rent-A-Girlfriend anime, Sumi helped Kazuya work through his feelings as Chizuru was doubting her own resolve. Ruka had, uh, has kissed Kazuya, yet um, declared a ceasefire in respect for Chizuru's grandma, Sayuri, facing death. Yep. Sumi's surprise birthday um, uh, practice date took, um, took things to the next level with her growth and repaying the favor for being a wall for him, uh, never mind the apparent confession. Chizuru doesn't want to know, uh, doesn't want to show her uh, true feelings uh, to Kazuya, but she wants to tell her grandma she uh, became an actress before she passes, so it really hits hard when she failed at the Love Doki audition. But now the movie crowdfunding idea has lit a spark of hope in, uh, Ch in Chizuru's heart. And although it's a new source um, of hope for both of them, the uh, clock is still ticking. Um, will they be able to get the money and uh, make a film in time before Grandma Siri dies? A new relationship unfolds before between the pair as they go from rental girlfriend and customer to actress and producer. While Chizuru and Kazuya do everything um, they can to garner support, a wench is thrown into the works by a nosy neighbor, Miyamori, the queen, the true queen of this manga. Yee. I love, I love you, Mori. Minnie uh, first meets the uh, main characters at, um, at the apartment when she uh, overhears Chizuru calling Kazuya the producer. Observing how they act together, Minnie jokingly asks why Chizuru and Kazuya aren't um, in a dating relationship already, when, which instantly makes things awkward. <laughs> I love her so fucking much! <laughs> um, it turns out Minnie also goes to the same college as Kazuya, 
and he tries to clear up any misunderstanding she might have of him. But um, with her short attention uh, attention span, she already uh, goes off uh, on a tangent. She also has the annoying Gen Z habit. No! No, no, no! Yamori is not Gen... Nah! Nah, don't put her in that fucking Gen Z box! Nah! Nah! Nah, 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 nah! I refuse to allow this motherfucker to put Yamori in a Gen Z box! She also has the annoying Gen Z habit of taking inappropriately timed selfies. Motherfucker, millennials do this too! Don't associate her with the Zoomers! Nah! Whoever wrote this article, you're being fucking stupid! Yamori... This is not just a Gen Z thing. Millennials do it too. Stop the bullshit. <laughs> Stop it. Um, when Minio accidentally overhears the conversation between Ruka and Chizuru, she realizes the, the girls are rental girlfriends and immediately deems uh, Kazuya a playboy. <laughs> Kidnapping Kazuya, Minio forces him into her room and he confesses the whole sordid story to her. Uh, deeply moved by Kazuya's story, Minnie deems uh, Kazuya her master and promises to become his cupid and by helping Kazuya make Chizuru his real girlfriend. Um, uh, both Ruka and Chizuru are annoyed when Minnie declared herself to uh, be Kazuya's self-proclaimed servant, especially when work and love uh, begin to overlap. Yeah! Yeah! I fucking love you, Mori, so much! See, this is why she's the queen. She is everything. But... I'm as happy as I am that I'm going to see Amori. I am really fucking concerned. I am goddamn concerned about the movie arc being being bastardized. I know they're saying that they're going to do be straightforward, but like, hold on. How many chapters is the movie arc? Hold on. So I want to say that it lasts until like maybe 170? Or no, not 170. One, um, would it be 167? Yeah, I think it's like 167 or 168. So, yeah, so we're, so they're going to be ch adapting like 104, 104, 105-ish to 167, 68-ish. That's what it, that's what I think it is, right? Yeah. So that's where we're at, 104. So, and they've adapted 104 chapters in 12 episodes. And they adapted 50 chapters. So we're adapting 50 chapters. Oh, God. Dude, they are going to bastardize the fuck. If they're going to do this entire arc in 12 episodes, and we're talking about at least like 50 chapters... Oh, God. They're going to cut so much shit out, huh? Yeah. Because it's a 104 to, like, 167, or 160... Yeah, it'd be, like, 167, maybe 168 they would adapt to. So it's going to be... Oh, so they're adapting, like, 60... Dude, you're going to adapt 60 chapters in 12 episodes? Bitch, they are cutting stuff out. Oh, there's going to be a lot of chapters cut. There is going a lot of content out. There's going to be so much content cut out, and there's going to be like four or five chapters adapted near the end. They're going to butcher the... They are going to butcher the end of this fucking arc. I know they're going to. If we're going by... If we're going to go by the pattern that is being shown here, where the, they are going to fucking bastardize like the best part of this arc i'm scared for this season i'm really fucking scared tms i am begging you please do not bastardize this arc especially the end of this fucking arc do not bastardize do not do what you've been doing at the uh, for the final um episodes don't rush the end of this arc the ending of this arc is like the most powerful part of this arc. Don't rush it. I know they're going to. They're going to rush it, and it's going to be bastardized. I'm scared for this arc. Please don't ruin this arc. Please don't ruin the best arc. Please, I am begging you. I am begging you. Please don't ruin the best arc. Please. Please. Oh, God. 
if they ruin the best art, because, like, if it wasn't for the fuckery that is happening, I'm not going to lie, I would actually be willing to cover at least the final part, like, the season finale of this season. I would be fucking, or I'd be, like, willing to cover Yamori's, the introduction of Yamori, and, like, the um, Sayuri content. I'd be willing to cover it. But I'm, there's no way I am touching this right now. Based on what I'm, what I just covered here, no way I'm fucking touching this. Oh my god, please don't bastardize the best arc. Please don't bastardize the best arc. Please. Please, TMS, don't bastardize the best arc. Oh my god, please. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerd Against Inc. Love what we're doing. I want to help keep this operation alive and kicking so we can keep bringing you more, uh... Kanojo Akarashimasu content. A few ways you could do that. Donate to our Cash App, PayPal, Patreon, purchase something off our Amazon wishlist. All that's in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, friend us on PlayStation Network. That's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later. Bye.